Get ready for the next best thing with Elizabeth and Mary Foundation TV. We discover and mold the young woman and add to every woman's faith. We will inspire the woman seeking and already in a relationship while strengthening our life skills. It's a place for fervent prayer that availeth much. Agreeing in good and bad times, it's the journey of every woman's faith. Please subscribe to our channel. May God bless you exceedingly and abundantly. Hi, good day everyone. My name is Beverly and I would like to welcome you to an episode of Elizabeth and Mary Foundation. With me today is Chef Tina from Tina's Grill. Hello everybody, uh, welcome. Uh, let's cook up a sizzle. Awesome. Just as Tina has said, as you have guessed as well, we are here to present a dish as it is the holiday season. We probably will be splurging and cooking up. So to, today we would like to show you a dish that you could probably present to your families. Take it away, Chef Tina. Okay, so our main, um, our main is going to be oxtail. Um, this is a special meal that you know we usually don't eat every every yeah, day yeah. or constantly That's and true. i tend to make it for special occasions okay. and with christmas you know we uh, we try our best to eat all the good stuff awesome. so That's i true. have here mm -hmm. some oxtail right um we're going to start with browning our oxtail uh, but i'm just going to take you through the ingredients first before okay. we do the actual cooking That's so we've got onions mm -hmm. uh, roughly cut mm -hmm. we've got celery that we've also roughly chopped okay. i've got here some thyme uh, bay leaves mm -hmm. uh, we've got tomato paste uh, i've crushed um, some pepper beforehand we've got a beef stock as well as um, chopped tomatoes um, it, we're working most people are working moms the time mm. to be cutting and chopping usually i always try to go the easier route so if, okay. you, if you're okay with using ready-made ingredients that's also fine it's not a problem it's holiday season anyway we need to be relaxing yes. and then i'm using some olive oil for health reasons but mm. you're welcome to use canola oil sunflower oil whichever oil that uh you you normally use that is fine okay. but just do not be heavy-handed with it because oxtail already has is a fatty it's meat fat. so okay. um you also want it to release its own um juices and and fat to cook to cook in it uh, in its own fat awesome. because that will have more flavor wow. so okay. let's start with the cooking wonderful okay. as you begin I'm j i was just gonna ask as well um in terms of the ingredients and what you've shown us here does this have to be exactly what you use so for example you speak about people that might not have time to dice tomatoes would this have any effect on the outcome in terms of flavor and and, and anything of that sort not necessarily hey, mm -hmm. because you can always replace chopped tomatoes with some passata oh, okay. um, or a puree uh, these are all uh, substitutes for tomatoes okay. really what you want is is a uh, a bit of tomato there because you're looking for the acidity that comes with tomato right but uh, we will you will find that as we are cooking will stabilize the acidity with a bit of sugar oh, um, okay. so that gives it that balance um, you'll find that I also have I don't have some ingredients here like carrots other people prefer to use carrots with their with their oxtail mm -hmm. I'm going for a more traditional approach to 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 oxtail but traditional is is, is sub subjective as well yes. because what is traditional to me is not necessarily traditional to the next true, person because true. you also have other people who add butter bins to their oxtail uh, other people prefer to even use peppers on their oxtail mm -hmm. I want to savor those the oxtail yeah, and flavor and flavor. that's why yeah. I, I i tried in this instance to to go basic awesome. but you're welcome really to add anything to 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 your okay. to your dish so, so you're saying you're starting you? with browning the browning meat, the meat. Okay. yes and why is that important uh, just to brown the meat first you, you're doing we were, we're so used to, i'm so sorry to cut no, you off definitely. we're so used to boiling you know these kind of meat so i just want to understand for the viewers as well why is it necessary and important to brown the meat all right so firstly the browning you will find that a uh, part of the meat it, it will create a coating mm -hmm. as you're cooking yes. this is where most of the flavor is ah, in the meat wow. so that initial um 
release of flavor comes from the coating that we get when we when we brown the meat we don't boil anymore because actually we're taking away all the flavor it's better to stew our meat in in its ingredients mm -hmm. not in boiled water because then you're taking away the flavor okay so i'm um, going to start with the browning i hope my pan is nicely warm okay it hasn't warmed up to my okay. i'm going to try well, uh, brown it in here mm -hmm. right so this is much warmer now i see you've already uh, prepped which is awesome because i know this can take a bit of time so now i'm wondering as your shoes your your sous chef what am i going to be helping you um there is still going to be a bit of chopping don't oh, worry you're not off the hook yet <laughs> okay okay uh but this was just um i'm trying to show that you know Cooking does not have to be a daunting experience all the time. Mm -hmm. You can always prep beforehand, and especially with Christmas. I mean, we have big numbers sometimes, so there isn't, um, there's nothing wrong with prepping or doing your chopping the day before, the mm -hmm. night before. Mm -hmm. Have everything ready, and on the actual day, um, you do just the cooking. The other thing that I want to remind you is with meats such as oxtail, there's also nothing wrong with making it the night before because it usually tastes better when rested after it is rested for some time um okay. so another hack that that's, you can do yes, is to pre-cook it the night one. before and then you have a lot more flavor the next day mm, that's that's a good one i have heard on some of the shows that i watch um they talk about resting meat a lot so i guess yeah. Um, when you explain it now, it makes so much sense that when the meat rests and then that's when the juice is really yes, throw out. Yeah. Wow. Okay, this is awesome. Okay, so so have you put anything in your uh, oxtail as you're browning? In this instance, okay. I have not because firstly again, like I said, I'm going for um, a basic approach to it where I want the, the original taste. But also because we're going to be cooking with beef stock, mm -hmm. which already has a high salt content. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not going to season now, I'll season much later, mm -hmm. just so that um, I know the, the balance of the salt is fine and we don't have too much of um, the salt. Awesome, that's awesome, that's awesome. Um, cannot wait, cannot wait. Mm -hmm. yeah. So um, I, I know since you did not mention the green beans, are they also part of your oxtail or an and a few butter here and some uh, rice? Yeah. So this is just a fry, uh, one of the fries that you can have. Uh, I mean, you can pair it with absolutely anything that you want. Mm -hmm. um, in South Africa, people love pairing it with thank you. People love pairing it with um, a butternut. It's, Roasted butternut. Yes. I particularly love color, so you'll find that I'll pair it with something green most of the time. It can be broccolini on strands, mm. it can be, you can also even do a beetroot with it if you want. You can uh, have a crispy beetroot with it. Really, you can pair it with anything. Really, mm. Remember, it's a time, it's festive time. You're eating what you like, mm. what you enjoy. Mm. Um, there, nothing is cut in stone as to how you should run right, it. Right. So instead of just um, going for the usual path, yeah. uh, you know, change it up. It's just change it up. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, I mean, it, you, you're also showing us that you could eat uh, nice food and also quite, uh, try and stay healthy, isn't it? Isn't it? Exactly. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Mm. And I see there's already some color uh, showing on there. This is really good. You just good. keep turning it around because you want all the sides to have some color. Mm. Um, remember, people eat with their eyes. Yes. So you need to always make sure that uh, it is an appealing color. Wow. Mm. Mm. But also mm. because we want to have uh, the coating at the bottom. Wow. That's why we need to go for the brown color. Oh, okay. I cannot wait to also get to my house and try this because I don't want to lie. Um, I have not been cooking my meat uh, this way and I'm glad that I've actually learned something. This is a very good hack. So I will definitely be trying it. So to you at home as well, please try and do this sort of thing. Instead of the use of boiling, let's brown our meat and then we can just slow cook it in the stock like what the chef has just told us. I, I also just want to add that the mm -hmm. other reason why we do the browning mm -hmm. is that it helps the meat not to disintegrate as it's food. Mm -hmm. So 
I know there, there, there was a belief or a notion that uh, meat is well cooked with meat. It's disintegrated or it's, it's, you know, it's is, that, is that the falling off the bone <laughs> that you're talking about? No, I'm not talking about the falling off the oh, bone. Okay. Falling off the bone is a sign that it's ready. Ah. But um, you want it to fall off just a, a bit of um, movement from the bone, but not disintegration completely. So the frying helps to keep the meat yeah. intact, mm -hmm. but not disintegration. Wow. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. I, I I'm do get it, and it, it, it's quite interesting for me as well. Um, that uh, I mean, who knew that cooking you could learn a lot from just cooking? We thought cooking is just as simple as you pick up a pot and then you put your ingredients in and mix it up, and you already have a, a meal. But now that you speak about all these things and the differences, I'm, I'm very intrigued. Eh? I'm very intrigued. We are practically fine. Wow, <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. Um, Maybe Wallace, you are um, browning the meat. Is there anything that I could assist you with? Um, okay, so that yes. we can, yeah, yes. yeah, I would appreciate mm -hmm. because we're just we're going to fry our rice as the after cooking. Okay. Uh, could you just chop up the parsley for me because we're going to use that when we fry the rice. All right. Um, um, I'm hoping that you're not going to be marking me. Yes, because <laughs> you know cut, I'm a school cut. chef today. <laughs> I'm not a real chef, so please. Um, just so that you can have something to use, right? Uh, cooking is an avant-garde art. There okay. isn't a right or wrong with it. Um, oh, okay. And I actually like that. It always works out in the end. <laughs> wow, wow. Awesome. This is okay. great. And you see it's browning really well. Yes, it's really coming uh, you out You really nice. need to brown for about 5 to 10 minutes. It obviously depends on um, the heat that you have. Uh -huh. Or in this case, the it's going much faster because it's a, it's a thinner base. Oh, okay. uh, you find that uh, thicker bases could take a bit longer to do the browning. And I presume though, because you, like you said, all you're trying to do is brown, so you, you want your heat to be a bit more on the high side rather than on the lower yes. side, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But oh. not too high to burn. Okay, meat. okay, okay. Um, There's a thin line. <laughs> there is a thin line. If we're using the uh, standard stove that would have a heat of up to six, I would put it on about four or five. Okay. And But keep watching the heat and regulate as you go. It's not necessarily a one size fits all. So this this part uh, uh, this part of of the cooking would need you to actually be there yes. rather than try and multitask yes. and do other things out of the kitchen. You run the risk of learning okay. to move away from mm. the wow. wow. You hear that viewers, we are in for a treat this today. We kept Tina here teaching us some few hacks that we knew nothing about. Thank God for you, Tina. <laughs> And the, the, the fragrance is picking up. Nice. Yes, it's like I can definitely smell oxtail. I mean, who knew that uh, such a, 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 a rare, you know, from a big, I always love how from a big, um, you know, cow, there's only just the one tail, but it, it's one of those meats that you, you just want to have because it's amazing. It tastes so, so good. good. Yes. Okay. Awesome, I love it. It's just a light in the middle. Okay. Wow. Yeah. I have cut off roughly your parsley as you have asked me. I hope Thank this you. is that to is your liking. Fun. Thank you so yes, much. Yes. And I see you had already prepped. Um, what is this? Okay, so these are sweet pimentos. These are just sweet peppers. That are not um, that don't need too much cooking. You can also add these to your salad. They easy on the on the palate. They're not mm. too you know they don't have that um, hectic pepper taste that that can be too much for people. You, you normally find people saying I don't like pepper mm. because of um, using sometimes the wrong pepper in salad, right. and then you're t tasting that raw. Um, the raw pepper taste. Mm -hmm. So sweet pimentos, you really can even chop on them uh, as a snack on their own. I didn't even know there was it. anything called pimento. When when I see these things on the shelves, I'm always thinking they are all peppers. So it's interesting that uh, they actually have different names and, and, and as such, they taste differently and you could use them differently. This is awesome. Thank you for this. And it, it, it's awesome as well that we're getting a free cooking lesson, <laughs> you know, uh, I mean, free of charge. Yes. 
So I hope we are taking it in so that we can also um, try our our dishes at home with what the chef has told us. She's giving us very, very good hacks here that we can use. I see that it's almost uh, yes, brown. Almost there. Yes, I'm yes. just looking for a bit more color on the red. So I'm moving it around because my heat is centralized. So. Mm -hmm. And is that also because the, the, the meats are in different sizes? Yes. yes. I see there's yes. smaller yes. bits and then there's the larger bits. The, okay. the smaller bits, you find the brown much quicker than the big yes. ones. Oh. Okay. Wow. This is great. Okay. Okay, maybe if right. you are doing this as well, you can tell the viewers um, what, it, what it is that you do. I mean, you are a chef, but I, I guess there's so many dimensions to, to being a chef. What is it exactly that you do? Is there, is there anything that people could um, gain from uh, trying to be in touch with you? Maybe you could just tell us that. Um, so, Tina is your ninja. Tina is your ninja in an apron. When people don't want to cook, I'm there for them. So it can be a small event. It can just even be your dinner, mm. everyday dinner. I do make pre cook meals. Right. I can come and cook in your in your home. Uh, I do large events as well, and then we do cooking classes um, in the process as well. So if anything food related that you need help with, I'm your girl. Wow. So, so can I actually go ahead and ask now that we are in the season, Christmas season, for those of us that um, feel lazy or do not really know how to put up a great dish, are you available to hire you to make us some, some great dishes? Well, yes, I'll be available dependent on your needs. Um, okay. you, you do understand with Christmas, sometimes people need uh, help on the long term for mm -hmm. the whole week. It's, it's, we, we, I would have to talk to you about it and you explain to me what you need is wow. and then I can see how far and how best I can help. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, that's, uh, I think that's but I will enough. be available yeah. to help as much as I can. That's good enough. Um, <laughs> we are going to fly to the details for Chef Tina at the end of this episode so be sure to stay tuned and then you can uh, be in touch with her. I'm sure she can work something out that um, will, will work for your needs. Okay, so we can start setting it aside. Okay. So the other thing that we're going to do is once it has browned, you right. need to set it aside so that you can fry um, the other ingredients. Okay. And we can start with the well browned tip. Okay. And wow. it's always easier to use a tongue because it helps you to pick up the meat in my spare out. Mm -hmm. Lovely. I see it's browned really, really lovely. Hey? I mean, it doesn't necessarily have to be all brown. You don't, okay. need, to, you know, you don't need to think, ah, oh, it's taking too long. Yes. Don't worry. It's just really um, a bit of color that you need. Mm -hmm. Love it. Love it. Cannot wait. Okay. Alright, oh, alright, okay, okay. let me just take that out. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think it's done the trick. Okay. Because I see the sides are starting to be I don't want it to be done on the side. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. So we just set this aside as you said for later. Yes. Okay. Now I'm going to fry the onions. Okay. Oh, so we can just use the same pot with yes, the oil yes. that, that just came out from the oxtail itself. You actually itself. need to because you want all the flavor that was, that, that's sitting at the bottom. All this dark, dark bits are flavor that came from the meat. So you, you want to retain that. Oh, okay. So those of you that have been um, cleaning the pot straight after, here you have it. You must not, as long as you have not burnt the yes. inside of the pan and you you washing away. Just go ahead and use the same uh, pan with the same oils just so that the same flavors will get into your, your soup. I like it. Okay, so this you fry up until the, the, the fragrance picks up. Okay. I mean, when you start smelling that celery uh, coming up, then you know it's become a bit soft. Awesome. 
Awesome. I, I'm, I've never really had uh, much work with celery, so I'm interested to taste. Will you taste it at the end of, of the cook, or it just sort of like melts in with, it, it with the blends, onions? It blends in with everything else, so you find that you're not going to find a distinct taste oh, okay. after you we've cooked everything because we're going to simmer it for a long time right. we're going to simmer for four to six hours okay. so if there is a hugely distinct taste then maybe we've done something wrong because we want a, a well-balanced palate a well-balanced um uh, a well-balanced um flavor okay so, yeah awesome. and then i'm just going to add a bit of thyme okay. You're welcome to remove the stems as well for, for those that are not converted. Uh, I generally, because my kids don't like the stems of um, the thyme, okay. I tend to just remove the, and the, then the, the leaves and then the leaves. leaves. Yes. Okay. Yes. But and this is fresh time. Can yes, we use uh, dry thyme? You can if you okay. really can't find um, fresh. It works just as well, but uh -huh. it tends to take longer. And sometimes you find the chewy bits of the oh. thyme. Uh, not um, getting too soft, okay. so that's why I prefer to go for the, the fresh, fresh one. one. But okay. the fried one works just as well. Okay. Works just as well. You need to put about four of those. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. And then you can put some garlic. Some garlic. And just about a teaspoon. The garlic. So this, I see you're using the crushed garlic. I yes, so garlic. It also doesn't really matter. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. All right. You see, open the garlic. The, the, the tomatoes. A gravy is already on the go in the making. Yeah, remember to just scrape off at the bottom to pick up that flavor bit. Mm. Okay. So is there a time that we're going to let it um, simmer down um, before you put in, or are you just gonna keep working it? No, no, no. So I'm just uh, mixing it up for now, and then we'll leave it to simmer for about. Two to five minutes. Okay. Um, then we add our oxtail back in. Okay. So while it's that is simmering, we could then multitask and do yes. something else. Yes. Okay. So because that helps the tomatoes to cook faster. Right. I'll just clear this out of the way so that we have a clean working space. Okay. Right. And this you've reused it. This also helps, you know, when you're cooking for large crowds, especially to just clear off your working space. Um, it doesn't make cooking difficult because usually when you're just seeing clutter all about, it feels like you're doing such a hard job. Right. And yet, no, it's simply... mm. I wish you could all hear the sizzling that's happening in the in the pans. You can tell that something is happening. So excited. Okay, I'll just give you an, another rundown of our ingredients again. This is the stock that I'm going to use mm -hmm. after we've added our oxtail and then some red wine. You don't need to go for expensive red wine. Uh, it can be even the cheapest that you find on the, on the shelf. So keep your good stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> and you can cook with... Um, I've gone for a Merlot, but you can go for a cap salt. You can also... Pinotage is a bit... Um, a bit too soft so you could also go for a bit of shiraz as you're cooking and that that will still be fine and why why it may maybe if i can stop you there why do we need to use um wines i'm just thinking about our viewers that don't drink does that have any you know impact or you know when you cook with alcohols well know? it's all in the taste really we are looking for that um punch that comes with wine Okay. But for those that do not want to use uh, any alcohol, you're welcome to skip this bit. It's not, um, it, it's not mandatory okay. when you're making your oxtail, but it, it does have um, a better taste when you use red wine. Okay. 
This is good. This is really, really awesome. I cannot wait um, for Christmas, you know. I <laughs> cannot wait because, like you said, it's a time of uh, for indulgence and, uh, you know, oxtails and fried rices. Those are the things that you can indulge in um, with your family as you bond, you know, after a long, uh, stressful year sometimes. So this is really, really awesome. Um, I would like to know, do you turn this? To I generally it? do turn mm -hmm. so that we coat uh, the liquid, you know, with a bit of the gravy that we okay? Yeah. But there isn't a, a time that you need to turn it. You don't even turn it when you've added your, your wine in your stock. Mm -hmm. It really is a, a matter of preference. But because I'm using a shallow pan, mm -hmm. I'm just turning it so that you don't have any spillovers mm -hmm. and, and to mix it well mm -hmm. later. And then maybe I could just ask a word in terms of the heat. Remember earlier we spoke about uh, putting the heat up when you brown the meat. Uh, I want to know, have you at any stage so far reduced the heat or uh, put the heat up or, or what is the process in this, now? In this instance, I haven't changed the, the heat yet. Um, I'm going to lower it after I've added my liquids. Okay. But then you need to put it now at simmering, at simmering um, heat, which is, like I said, if we're using a, a standard there to six stove, then yes. you're now putting it down to four. Okay. Um, but even then, after about 15 minutes, you still put it down to about three, so okay. that it cooks. Awesome. Okay. I'm going to add the stock. Okay. And help you with that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you still fill it up so that if you add any little small bit sitting at the bottom they you mix that well. Okay. So is this a store bought stock or well this is store bought stock but okay. you can use homemade uh, homemade stock. You can also use the powder. Some people prefer to use powder. Okay. Uh, but obviously always store I mean homemade is is based it usually has more flavor. But then again we say here it's time for resting. Mm -hmm. So if store bought helps you cook faster you might as well go for it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that. And then I'm also going to add the wine. Um, is there any uh, measurement to the wine? You generally want about 500 ml of the wine, just as you need 500 ml of the stock. Of the and this would go with about one kilogram to about 1.5 kilograms of your of the of the of meat. Yes. Right, right. Okay. Wow. You see that I have big chunks that have not quite been covered. I'm going to add a bit of water. Okay. Um, mm. Put some water. I will, I, I will get it at a bit of a, at at a later, later stage. Oh, in this instance, this. I'm just uh, letting people know that you then want to cover your meat with, oh, with, the, oh, with, with, the, with, the, with the juice. Yes. Wow. Look at that seasoning. I'm adding a bit of tomato paste. This helps with color. It gives you a dip red color. Okay, does it also help with thickening the yes. stuff? Or yes, or it, it does. Color? It does. The okay. color and um, the color and, and, and the thickness as well. Okay. I will add a bit of sugar later. Oh yeah, I, 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 I know you did mention earlier that you um, the sugar helps with balancing the yes. stabilizing the the stabilizing. Okay. Mm. 
can see is it's already started to thicken yes. and yes. the bubbles are not as many um, as they were earlier. Now lower down my heat. Okay. Because it has to simmer, not quick, not, not a quick type of quick, uh, quick stewing cooking. No, oh, you okay. want it to, to, to simmer because it's going to cook for about four to six hours. Wow. So you don't want it to be rapidly uh, boiling. So, so in, in, in those four to six hours, what are you doing exactly? Are you just leaving it uh, to do its own thing? Or do you have to constantly come back and add more stocks or waters or how does that work? You have to keep coming back. After almost every 30 minutes, you need to keep coming back so that you make sure that it's not sticking at the bottom. Okay. Uh, because obviously the tomatoes, there's also meat that they tend to settle at the bottom. So you need to keep mixing it, but also to check your, your thickness. You don't want it too thick because you want it to cook through right through to the bone. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's need for adding more water, you can add more water. If there's need, if you prefer to add stock, it's even better because it has more taste and flavor. Mm -hmm. I'm going to season a bit. Um, you can also taste your salt content. Mm -hmm. um, remember to use a clean spoon um, that you put on the side as well. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. How is that? Already this tastes amazing. Really? Before we've moved awesome. that much, I've been putting um, uh, previously crushed uh, pepper, pepper corns. I crushed pepper corns. Um, so, so you don't have to put the ones that are still in the pepper corn state. You have to make them into a no, powder. You can, you can use those, but remember we prepped uh beforehand okay, so, so i had just time. already crushed okay, crushed okay. it at the time i hear you um, but you can do it as you cook just as i'm doing it with the, with the salt i i actually like um this idea like what you've said that when you started you did not put any salt and then only now at this stage as you taste then you get to add the salt which is quite good because a lot of the times we put the salt at the beginning and then we realize later yes. on that there was actually too much salt yeah. and at that point we, we normally don't know what to do that's so true and remember as we're cooking for christmas usually family comes together mm -hmm. we've got we've got our parents sometimes you're battling with nice. uh, chronic diseases and they shouldn't be having a high salt content so you need to really be wary and accommodating of everyone that you're right. cooking for and also if you're cooking for a crowd you don't know you don't want to to go uh, to use more salt, more salt as opposed to but then is, is, is it um, for health reasons is it um, a good idea to add salt on the table like I always battle with that to say is it better to cook a dish that doesn't have that much salt and then add the salt at the table while you're about to eat or you know please can you just enlighten us on that um, well uh, I always prefer to use less salt. Right. I'm not saying none at all, mm -hmm. but um, a little bit. Okay. And then people can always add, uh, because remember salt is just there for flavor. Mm -hmm. okay. So, um, it's, it's okay to add, in as much as I don't like seeing people adding salt a lot at the table. Right. But, um, it, because you're cooking for crowds that you don't quite know, or yes. sometimes you know that they shouldn't be eating too much salt. Like in my, with, with me, my granddad actually needs to have zero salt. Wow. So <laughs> sometimes you find that when we cook, we don't use salt at all mm -hmm. to accommodate him as well in the good food. And also we will have salt in, in the stocks. We will have salt sometimes if you use uh, soup packets, you, you yes. know, so be easy on the salt. Okay, just be, be easy, easy on, on the salt always. <laughs> Okay. okay, awesome. Now I'm going to lower down the heat because mm -hmm. it, it is rapidly it's moving too fast. You shouldn't. Mm -hmm. I it's time to let it do its thing. Yes. Okay. Then you leave it, like I said, every 30 minutes. You keep checking on it. Um, but for now, we move on to our rice. Okay, so now we're going to make the rice. I'm going to start with uh, frying, lightly frying my pimentos. Ooh, that sounds. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. 
Um, in this instance, I've just used uh, very little ingredients, but you can also add uh, some smoked bacon to it. You can add green, green, pep uh, green pepper, but you can also add peas. You yeah. can add grated carrots, really whatever tickles your fancy. Uh, but like I said, I'm going for basic ingredients. I'm also going to add uh, a mixed masala, mm -hmm. one of those um, Indian spices, but you're welcome to use the normal curry. Uh, you can add paprika, but you need to add a bit more flavor with it, because remember, paprika can be very... It, it adds the smokiness, but mm -hmm. not necessarily uh, a punch taste. Right, right. Yeah. I think this is a good idea to, to have a fried rice, because rice can get a bit boring, eh? Yes. When you boil it every day and add it to your meals. So I like this, that um, we actually adding color to it. And then remember, the peppers don't need to cook for too long because they're the sweet ones. Okay. Uh, then you add your rice. I've, I've pre-cooked it so that um, it, it, it doesn't disintegrate when I then fry it. Yes. Um, wow. So you, you okay. can put it, you can cook it overnight and then let it rest in the fridge. Or sometimes if you don't have too much time, just one hour mm. is enough. Wow. Okay, this resting thing, I, I, I think I like it. I quite like it. Um, especially like um, now with Christmas, if we can make our meals the 23rd, 24th, and then have them ready on Christmas Day. Also, we don't want to be busy on our feet That's on the day that we're supposed That's to be celebrating. Wow. Um, and then I'm just going to add a bit of parsley for the taste as well. I really wow. love the parsley flavor. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's and then you find that it doesn't cook for too long. Uh, you just keep um, working it so that it doesn't stick at the bottom, but also so that it doesn't um, overcook because wow. you don't want overcooked rice. Right? Oh, it okay. starts breaking. Yes. Okay. Okay. That's pretty much done. That's pretty much done. Wow. Okay. You can see. Quick and easy. I like it. Yeah. And then usually you would have seasoned your sauce, uh, your rice right. when you cook it, so you don't necessarily need to add um, any more salt in this instance. But if you pick up that there is a bit of salt, then you can you can add okay. your salt and pepper. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Okay. And then I lower my heat. Okay. Wow. Okay. Okay. And then how how's your ox there? It is coming right along. Wow. Uh, I am also going to add some sugar. Remember, we spoke about the sugar. Yes. Um, depending on the amount of oxtail you're making, yes. you can really add just about uh, one or two teaspoons. If it's more, a tablespoon. Mm. Okay, and I see enough the, the simmer. It's yes, nice it's and a, slow. It's a and slow and yes. It will allow yes. for uh, good cooking, right? Yum. This is really beautiful. Okay. Okay. And then as you can see it's not sticking and yes. that's exactly what we want. Okay. We don't want it to be sticking at the bottom. Okay. Okay. And then we close that up. And close it up again. Switch that off for me. Okay. Switch it on here. Ready this one. Look at that color, the pop of color. I love it. It's really, really beautiful, Chef Tina. Thank you, thank you. And we eat with our eyes first. Wow, look at that. All right. And then, uh, whilst our oxtail is cooking, I'm just going to show you for time reasons mm -hmm. how it will actually look like. Okay. 
to see the end result so, that is how our oxtail is going to look Whoa, would you look at that this is after four to six hours like you said okay yes wow um with vegetables you can add anything that you like you mm -hmm. can go for the greens if you want you can go for any sort of color any pop of color okay you can go for your beetroots you can go for your butternuts um anything really um and we know with me what is christmas without coleslaw i would throw it in there as well yes <laughs> this is awesome okay so you could add the beans, the beans you could well. add yes. anything yes. wow that's awesome um this has been great this has been awesome chef tina i know for certain i'm going to be calling you i would really love a, a day to chill while you do something for us in the kitchen so as we said earlier she runs chef um, tina's grill and there will be more details that will be uh, showing at the end of this program if you'd like to get hold of her Thank you very much uh, once again uh, for joining us for this Christmas special. And thank you so much to Chef Tina. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Goodbye. Get ready for the next best thing with Elizabeth and Mary Foundation TV. We discover and mold the young woman and add to every woman's faith. We will inspire the woman seeking and already in a relationship while strengthening our life skills. It's a place for fervent prayer that availeth much. Agreeing in good and bad times, it's the journey of every woman's faith. Please subscribe to our channel. May God bless you exceedingly and abundantly.